Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, Herm, Coach Herm Edwards and I met last night and then we met again this morning uh, and we determined mutually that it was appropriate for Herm at this point to step away from his duties as the head coach uh, of Sun Devil football. Uh, we had to acknowledge that uh, there has been a pattern, uh, unfortunately, of when some of the major opportunities were presented, uh, we did not step up and perform at the level we all desire in terms of taking advantage of those opportunities. So uh, we have named as our interim for the remainder of this year, Sean Aguano. Uh, Sean is uh, very in our opinion, deserving of this opportunity. His fellow coaches fully supportive of him, so we don't anticipate any additional staff changes. Uh, communicated uh, with President Crow on this plan, and he was fully supportive of me implementing this change at this time. And so we are looking forward to starting the Pac-12 season. That future begins now. Very frankly, uh, our responsibility is to try to infuse new energy, new urgency into the program. Toughest day of my professional career, no question about it, to have to separate from Herm Edwards, but we've known each other a long time and we've always been very honest. We did not get it done here at the level that any of us aspired to. And when it's time for change, you make the change. And so we feel like for this current team, for our future, for our staff, for our university, this is the appropriate change at the appropriate time. And so we're going to look to get energetic, more urgency. Uh, fresh leadership is frankly the first step in this process. I'll take any questions. You're always thinking ahead and looking for improvement. Uh, and so I've, I've been looking for off season and certainly in these first few weeks uh, for hope, for additional discipline, for additional stepping up in the bright moments and really delivering. Uh, and some of that was not occurring, very frankly, uh, reverting back to some of the penalties uh, and just not making big plays at big moments. Uh, that's a, at the end of the day, no matter what you say, the head coach is responsible for developing a environment and a culture and an atmosphere where those things happen. And when you don't, you have to acknowledge it uh, and be prepared to make tough decisions and move on. No, we were eight and five and didn't consider firing after last season. Uh, there were a lot of clubs in the country that wished they'd had eight wins, notwithstanding the fact that it was a disappointing eight and five. We were still eight and five, and we had uh, a lot of faith and confidence that with the right coaching staff and with some of the folks that we were anticipating bringing in, we would have an opportunity uh, to really bounce back. And so we were looking to do that with the leadership we had and thought we had an opportunity to do that, and it did not materialize. Doug Howard, the athletic Ray Herm talked often about how Tony got a for him to become a head coach in the NFL. He tried to do the same here with Antonio Pierce. In your opinion, in doing so, did he become too detached? Did Herm become too detached by giving too much freedom to Antonio Pierce? Well, you'll have to make your own judgment on that and ask Herm that. I don't know if he got too detached. Uh, is there uh, an opportunity to delegate as opposed to abdicate? Yes. 
Did he delegate? I believe so. Did he abdicate? No. I don't know if he got became too attached, uh, detached, uh, Doug. Only uh, Herman Antonio maybe can answer that for you. Those are going to be things to be determined because we just did that uh, today. Uh, I will certainly be involved. Don't know what the format, the structure will undertake. Uh, right now, we're focused on right now. Uh, and so that uh, search will be uh, a national search. Uh, I anticipate it will be exhaustive because I know there's going to be great interest in the position. Uh, and very frankly, uh, uh, Sean Aguano. Uh, we'll have a chance to be considered depending on how the rest of the season goes. But we will be looking uh, to uh, have a fit with someone, very frankly, who is probably going to be a little more in tune with the evolving change in landscape in college athletics. Uh, I can tell you uh, it's changing, as you know, rapidly. And you got to have someone who is uh, willing to take all that additional change on because it's going to continue to change. So you got to have that energy, that spirit. Uh, and very frankly, you might have to have the youth to deal with this new breed, if you will. Well, he's done a heck of a job, as you know, with our running backs. Uh, yeah, he was a, a long time, very respected high school coach here. Uh, I think he's got the respect uh, of not just all the players, but certainly all of the uh, current staff, uh, and felt that he would be uh, a good burst uh, of that energy and urgency that we needed. Absolutely. Uh, we've made strides, uh, certainly uh, on the academic front and also in training and development, but we haven't made nearly the strides we had aspired to and we had anticipated. Uh, and so, yes, we're in better shape. Are we where we want to be? No. Do we regret uh, the decision? No. Do we regret that we haven't had more success? Yes. Well, you won't like, like the answer, but uh, I don't comment on active uh, open investigations, and I'm encouraged not to. Ken Summers with the Arizona Republic. Uh, just to clarify, will you be leading the search? You don't need to clarify that. I will be involved because I didn't say whether I was going to lead or not, but I certainly will be deeply involved to be determined where we, whether we do a committee or retain a search firm. And second part, what, what do you think you learned from doing this five years ago that can apply today as you go forward? You can always do better. Anybody else? Right, Ray, when you met with Herm last night, was he at a point where he felt like there needed to be change, or could you shed any light on that conversation? Uh, I'll leave it uh, mostly private, but Herm and I have known each other a long time and we've never shoot, sugarcoated anything. Uh, and so we were very, both very disappointed with the performance last night. Uh, and very frankly, the, the, the lack of determination and, and, and energy and urgency. Uh, and that was, that was uh, something we both had to acknowledge. And that was part of our conversation. And when you get to that point, then you have to honestly ask yourself, are we going to be able to turn it around? And very frankly, I think we both agreed that it's, it's, it's a different world out here. It's hard to do, and maybe it's just time for change. Uh, 
Uh, to be determined. Uh, again, this just, just happened uh, last night and today. We haven't uh, advanced into all the, uh, the technical, financial, legal deals, uh, ramifications. Uh, Herm did not resign. He was not dismissed. We agreed to a mutual relinquishment of duties, uh, and we'll have to work through what all of that means at the end of the day. Uh, in terms of what the contract and the lawyers, et cetera, because yeah, truthfully, uh, those things do matter. And you know, agents are out there and attorneys are out there, both uh, from the uh, institutional uh, uh, point of view and the uh, agents and the clients. So you have to work through those things, Doug, being very frank. Uh, all the coaches uh, uh, we anticipate staying in their current roles. Uh, yes, I think everybody is understanding that uh, we've got nine games. We've got a conference and hopefully a, a tenth game if we can pull it all together. Uh, and they're rolling up their sleeves because they want to support this team first and foremost. Uh, but Sean Aguano's got everyone's respect, uh, and they, they want him to be successful. So I think you'll see all hands on deck from uh, Sean's peers uh, to help him be successful help this team be successful for what we have uh, remaining for the conference season. Ray, I understand you're not going to talk about the investigation, but there has been a lot of coaching turnover um, in the last year or so with the staff losing five assistant coaches resigning or, or otherwise. And uh, how much of a factor do you think that was coupled with uh, replacing coordinators multiple times and uh, trying to have some sort of sense of stability within what you're doing operationally, and how important will it be moving forward to try to minimize that? I'm going to tell you again, I'm not commenting on the investigation and how it impacts us, if it impacts us, and how it may impact us going forward to be determined. But I'm not talking about the investigation. Okay, but irrespective of that, you had coaching changes, so how much, how much do you think that had an impact on kind of preparing for this season and the results at the beginning of the season? Impact on who? The football, the football success or lack thereof based, based upon having new coordinators on both sides of the ball, you know, earlier this year. Yeah, well, still to, to be determined, we've played three games. we got a conference uh, season of nine coming up. Ask the question at the end of the season. Did that have an impact on what led to today's events? The fact that you had a lot of just different kind of things happening with transitions of coaches? No, that, 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 that stuff happened months ago. That's been behind us. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's the case because there are a lot of folks who think this is a very coveted job. And very frankly, there's going to be a lot of interest. Uh, so I don't, uh, I don't think I would agree it's going to be any more uh, uh, difficult. Uh, it may be, uh, I think you have a lot of different types of uh, candidates. Uh, I think there is a understanding that uh, if you're going to come in and be a college head coach now, particularly in football or basketball, men's basketball, you've got to be willing and ready to deal with NIL and transfer portals and recruitment inducements uh, and uh, uh, all the other things, a conference realignment and all the, uh, uh, the threats and the concerns that are expressed there when you're talking about recruiting, et cetera. So uh, I think there's going to be I don't know what the word is, uh, if it's going to be a more intellectual, a more business type uh, head coaching candidate coming in, uh, a more innovator. I don't, I don't know, but I think there's going to be a different set of characteristics that are going to come through some of these coaches. Uh, the ones who are really into analytics and all that data stuff. Uh, I think you're going to see more of that coming in uh, uh, onto these jobs. Thank you, everybody. Can I ask you one last question? When, when you made this hire, um, a lot of people in the media termed it as an experiment. You, you never did. You, you were very confident that the guy that you were bringing in would elevate the program. How, you mentioned it was the hardest day of your career. How surprised are you to be here less than five years later with this message? 
Well, you always hope that uh, new ideas and innovations work when you think you needed to make a real change at the time. Uh, and I thought a new way of approaching and uh, training and developing uh, and recruiting was needed here. So, no, I don't regret uh, at all uh, because I believed it was the right thing to do then. Uh, but I also believe that when you come to a point where you realize that you're not always right and perhaps it's not working at the level you want and you don't have the patience to wait because the world is changing really fast out there, then you make changes, and I think that's what we've done.